What's up Power Nation fans? This is Jimmy King from Carcass and like a lot of you, my work has been affected by this COVID-19 virus. I have a lot of time to spend at home given the circumstances and I'm working at home now. So I'm gonna be working on some projects, really one in particular, which is a race truck project. It's something I've been working on for about two years now and a lot of the work that I'm doing now is done in a CAD program or a computer aided design program. This stuff is really on kind of the leading edge of technology and it's even making its way into hot rod shops, which is amazing. So I'm hoping you guys can take this information, maybe use it on projects that you have, but right now I'm gonna show you how I use it on my project. Right off the top here, I wanted to give an overall view of everything that I have in my CAD assembly. Everything that you see here has been designed and modeled by me besides just a few components. The first thing that you might notice is this engine that looks very familiar to an LS3. And that's because it is. And this is one of the great things about the CAD community is that there are a lot of people out there who will either model components or source them from other places, then put them onto a CAD database where people can grab parts like me, like the LS3 engine, and then drop it directly into my CAD assembly. The LS3 engine is something that it would take me way too long to model myself and it would, it's just very convenient for me to be able to go online, go to a free database and get this stuff so I can design parts around it. One other part that I did grab also from a CAD database is this rear end. This is a Ford 8.8 .8 inch uh, independent rear suspension rear end and you would probably find these in like a late model Mustang or even Ford Explorers I think had them. And just another example, something that I wouldn't want to model myself, even though it is, it is encouraged, but easy for me to just drop in so I can design the rest of my suspension around it. What can I do though with this rear end in my CAD assembly? I can actually figure out a way to mount this thing before I have physical parts in my hands. So as you can see right here, I designed this mounting plate that spans between the two frame rails and there's a couple brackets right here on either side. Then these two holes right here span across the rear of the differential. And this is great, again, because before I even buy any parts, before I spend any money, I can figure out kind of the benefits and pitfalls of different designs and how they interact with different parts. Speaking of how parts interact with one another, one big thing for me has been the suspension design. Suspension design, of course, is extremely important because on a very basic level, my goal for a road race car is to maximize the grip out of a single tire, let alone four tires. And suspension geometry can be somewhat complicated, but CAD is a way that I can look through the design, cycle suspension, look for how the parts interact with one another to get the best design that I can possibly make. And will the design change once I start racing the truck? Probably but I can get through a lot of iterations here without, again, needing parts in my hands. Looking at what I do have here, if I hide this 18 by 12 wheel, which I did actually design, again, just it's crazy how powerful these programs are. I'll hide this wheel, and if I come over this way, I will actually grab onto the whole suspension assembly and move it up and down through its whole cycle. And again, things that I can look for here are interferences between tiny components like this. You can see there's some spacers here. This is a spherical bearing. It all moves around. It's, it blows me away what CAD can do if you really get pretty involved in this stuff. Of, of course, this is upper control arm. This is the lower control arm. This is a tie rod going into even more detail here. There's some bolts, nuts. Uh, this is a rod end. And you can, it's, it's incredible how deep you can get into this stuff. You, you can take it as far as you want. Uh, I'm very lucky in the fact that when I went through engineering school, using CAD was part of the curriculum. So I've been at this for the better part of a decade. But if you really put your mind to it, set some time aside to learn how to use this stuff, it will definitely benefit you. One last thing here that I wanna show is even, you can take it as far as making your own sway bar setup. So this sway bar tube 
This would be like a Delrin bushing. This is a collar to keep it from moving laterally and a sway bar arm. Just all things that I've designed in here to fit my specific suspension design. Again, sky's the limit on this stuff and you will get out of it just for however much time you put in and that's, that's really how it goes. So one of the big questions here might be, well, this CAD stuff is kind of on the front end of technology. It's even making its way into hot rod shops, which I think is amazing. But how much does it cost? The beauty of it is that it's free, at least the program that I use, which a lot of people do actually use. It's called Fusion 360 by a company called Autodesk. And all you need really is a computer and an email address, and you can get like pretty much all the features, I think, even of their professional version of it. So hopefully, if you have extra time during this whole quarantine and everything, maybe you might want to learn a new skill using a CAD program. If you have pictures and videos of you guys doing anything CAD related, hot rod related, anything like that, I want to see it and post it on Instagram, Facebook, whatever social media you have. Use the hashtag PowerNationAtHome. Can't wait to see it and use this time wisely because we all know right now we have a lot of it and there's a ton of stuff that you can be doing.